Welcome back folks, my name's Shane. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you how I've customized the Panasonic GH6 to get the most out of it for the kind of video work that I shoot doing mostly content creation. If you're a filmmaker, this will also apply to you, or if you're just getting started and you don't know how to navigate the menus because they can be a little bit tricky, this guide's for you. I'm also gonna share with you how I customize the function buttons on this camera to quickly turn on and off features. I'm also gonna show you the back of the camera and record the HDMI out so you can see exactly what's going on. Everybody's shooting situation is slightly different, so if you need a certain feature that I turn off or if you need another one on, go for it. It's all up to you, but I'm gonna give you a good starters guide getting the most out of this camera for video work. This tutorial's 100% free, there's no sponsors or anything like that, so if you get some value out of it, please leave a thumbs up, I appreciate it. I'm gonna timestamp everything in the description below. Let's do it. The first thing I like to turn on is shutter angle, and this allows you to keep a constant shutter speed no matter which frame rates you're shooting in. On the back of the GH6, hit the menu set button, and being that this is a touch screen, you can navigate just by using your finger, but I'll be using this little wheel and control dial over here. It's just a little bit easier for you to see what's going on. Now from the video camera icon on the far left, we wanna go into image quality number two, over to SS gain operation, and then we wanna change this to angle ISO. Now I already had it set on that because I've already got this stored, but that's where that setting is. It won't be set to shutter angle by default. Now if we hit menu set again, it will save it. We can click on our shutter. It will bring us back to the main menu. And as you can see, in the center of the screen at the top, it says shutter 180 degrees. Dynamic range boost is a new feature that I highly recommend using, especially if you're gonna be shooting in a situation where you need more dynamic range. Now this works up to either 50 or 60 frames per second at 5.7K, it won't work in the 100 or 120 frames per second. From the same menu we were on before, from the video camera icon, we go all the way across to image quality number one and down to dynamic range boost, hit the menu set button, Turn it on and you're good to go. Just a heads up, you might not need dynamic range boost on all of the time. If you're doing a seated studio shot like this, you won't need it whatsoever. But if you're outdoors shooting in really mixed lighting where there's a lot of dynamic range, leave this setting on. The GH6 has lots of really great color profiles built in. I'm gonna show you how to find them, how to customize them, and also how to find V-Log. We're on the same menu we were at before. So this is the first option on the video camera, the top option under image quality one, and then we can go up to photo style. Now we can cycle through these by either using this wheel, this wheel, or touching on screen. It doesn't really matter which way you wanna use it, but I'll just use this one for the sake of the demonstration. You can see there's lots of different options here. Now my favorite one, and the one I was on to begin with, was natural. It's here somewhere, there's lots of different ones and you can save your own too, which is great. So this is the natural color profile. If I hit down here, it allows us to change the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the saturation, hue, sharpness, and noise reduction. I don't touch any of this on the natural profile on the GH6. It just looks great, so I feel no need to really do that. If you do wanna shoot in V-Log, you can select that from the options on the top here. Let's scroll over, and there it is. So if you're gonna be shooting in a high dynamic range environment and you wanna color grade in post, that's the option to choose. The flat profile is another profile that goes completely under the radar. This is essentially the new Cine D profile in my opinion. It's far flatter than Cine D. It's much easier to grade and the straight out of camera colors look far better. You can of course customize it in camera if you wanna do that, but I suggest just leaving it as is because you can get some really great results just by adjusting the levels and a little bit of saturation in post. The GH6 supports the full version of V-Log and we're gonna check out the V-Log View Assist tool. As you can see, it says V-Log to 709. This changes V-Log over to the Rec 709 profile and we can also choose this View Assist monitor on, which will allow us to see exactly what's going on within the LCD screen here. If you're going out over HDMI, you can turn it on here as well, but you don't necessarily need to do that if you're just shooting within the camera. Also within this menu here, you can add your own custom LUTs here as well. You can upload these via the SD card. Up next, I want to show you how to turn on spot metering. This is a really handy tool that you can just move around on screen to check exposure in different areas in your frame. To turn on the luminance spot metering, we need to go over to the cog wheel and then over to the second page that says monitor display photo. So we'll click down one here and this is the quick way of getting into it then right. And we can turn this spot metering on here. Now I've already got mine on and what this allows you to do is to move this little box anywhere you like on screen to check its exposure. 
While this tool is really handy for exposing for middle gray, it's also just a great tool to let you know if you're overexposed in any section of your frame. Whether you're shooting on a tripod or handheld, turn on the level gauge option. It allows you to make sure that everything is horizontal to the best of the camera's ability. It does this by using the gyroscopic data in the camera and I'll show you how to turn that on. Previously, we're in luminance spot meter, which is from the cog all the way over here to monitor display photo two. And then we go up to level gauge, we can turn this on here. As you can see on screen, we've got a green bar that runs all the way across. If I tilt the camera this way, it's gonna show me that it's unbalanced. If we tilt the camera the opposite way, the same is also true. If I tilt the camera forward, you're gonna see that the bars in the middle move, these two little ones that let me know that the camera is slightly facing down. This means that it's correctly balanced like this with the green in the middle and also if you're tilting it up. The main thing to remember with this one, it's more about your horizontal green bars than the ones in the center because you might want to tilt the camera down to shoot and that's perfectly fine. But just keep an eye on the horizontal line. Up next, I want to show you a really useful tool for making sure that you get what you want in your finished project. And this is called Frame Marker. This allows you to shoot in say 5.7K with a 17 by nine aspect ratio and frame it correctly for a 16 by nine project. To get into this option, we need to go to the cog wheel again and then go down to the second option here, monitor display video. And then we can turn frame marker on or off. Now I've got mine set to 16 by nine, which is the traditional UHD aspect ratio. Not only can you change the color of the frame indicator, but also how prominent it is on screen. I leave mine set to this gray color at 100%, but you can change it to whatever color you like in this option. We can go back up here and change the aspect to whatever we like. Say for example, you're shooting an Instagram video and you want that one by one aspect ratio, you can have that. And as you go back into the camera here, we get a square box on screen. So this helps us frame the shot based on our needs of the aspect ratio. Now, unless you're shooting an Instagram video, you probably don't want one to one. So you can change this back to 16 by nine. And this is pretty much the most common used aspect ratio when you're talking about YouTube. Being that the recording aspect ratio and the frame markers match, we now get a gray bar all the way around. If I was to change this from 4K and go all the way up to say 5.7K with a 17 by nine aspect ratio, now you can see that the sides of the frame are slightly cropped in. This allows me still though to take this footage and frame it for UHD, even if I'm shooting in 17 by nine. Up next is the red record indicator. This is an absolute essential, especially if you're behind the camera. Even if you're doing a seated headshot like this and you don't have an external monitor, it's great to see a little red ring around the screen to let you know you're recording. To turn this on, all you need to do is go to the cog wheel, go over to the last page of monitor display video. This is page two of two, and you can turn on the red record frame indicator here. This will bring up a red ring that you can see around the edge of the screen that doesn't interfere with the last framing indicator that we set up before. So this is really handy. And this also works if you've got a reference monitor set up, you'll see a red record ring. It's invaluable. Once you turn this on and you get used to it, you can never use a camera without it. So I love that they've included it in the GH6. Another massive inclusion to the GH6 is tally lights. I'm a big fan of these on other cameras that I've used in the past and it's a great visual guide to let you or the talent know that you're recording and you can customize these within the menu. To get into the tally light option, you need to go to the cog wheel all the way down to this in out option and then over to tally lamp. The way I've got mine set up is H for the front tally lamp, which means it's on high and the rear tally lamp is also on high and you can of course customize these if you don't want the red light to be as prominent, say you're doing something in low light or whatever the case may be, you can turn this down. I just always leave both of these set to H. I'm a big fan of visual guides anytime I hit record. Now, if you wanna be really specific about the center of the frame, there's a really great assist tool in here as well called Center Marker. Go to the cog wheel, over to monitor display video, and Center Marker is right in the center. Pretty funny how they've done that. I wonder if that was intentional. You can then change the crosshair type. This is a bit like Counter-Strike Go or whatever the, <laughs> the latest game is, but you can essentially change this to any of these if you so choose. I like the least intrusive one, which is this one right here. Then as I go back to the camera, I can show you on screen that then we now have a crosshair right in the middle and that will be there no matter what. This just makes life a little bit easier to frame your shot correctly if you want something dead on in the center. Setting up custom function buttons is really simple. I'm gonna show you how I set up my GH6. So hopefully this is helpful if you plan on doing any type of filmmaking or content creation. 
If we take a look at this return button, I've got this customized to Boost IS. So just hold it down for two seconds or so and it will pop up this big menu where you can add whatever you like to it. For me, Boost IS is important and it's in a really functional spot behind the camera so I can just tap it with my thumb. If you don't know what Boost IS is, it essentially looks like you're on a tripod when you've got the camera handheld. It's fantastic and on the GH6, it's insane. So definitely give it a go. I much prefer that on the back of the camera. On this front custom button here, if we hold this in, I've got it set to e-stabilization video. E-stabilization used to be something I left off a lot of the time, but on the GH6 it works well. It does crop in slightly electronically, but you get even better stabilization. And for some situations, it's a real necessity. Although this has the best IBIS I've ever seen, you can turn that feature on and off really quickly just by using that button at the top. This bottom custom function button, I've currently got set to the waveform option within the waveform and vector scope tool. Now you can set this to one or the other or cycle through them both. I've got it set to this one, waveform monitor. You can also set it to vector scope and waveform vector scope. Now, if you haven't used waveform monitors before, it's the best way to check your exposure. I'll just show you a quick example of this. So if I was to take off the lens cap now, you'll see just how overexposed the scene is. This is a really great visual representation of what's going on. So the entire scene in this section over here is completely blown out. So I'm gonna turn down the ISO until it looks a little bit more pleasing. And then I'm also gonna change the aperture from f1.7 down to probably 2 point something, 2 point or 3.2. Depending on the scene you're exposing for and the overall look you're going for, you can tell almost immediately whether or not something's overexposed or not. Also note, if you don't have a HDMI cable plugged in like I have right now, you'll see everything on screen that should normally be there. And I'll show you a quick example of that on screen right now. Now, if you're wondering what I like to customize the audio button to, I leave it as is. That tool is fantastic, but if you don't need the audio option, you can customize it to whatever you like. The Panasonic GH6 now supports some autofocus features and options that weren't available even in the GH5 Mark II or the Panasonic S5. To work with autofocus, make sure the camera isn't set to MF. Turn it to C, and then all your autofocus quick button modes are via this button in the center. As you can see, I've got it set to one area. One of the new features is we now get one area with eye and face detection if you push up on this joystick right here. You can also use the screen too. One area plus mode works really well with or without eye detection. It's up to you what you're shooting. If you're shooting a product, you won't need face and eye detection on, but it doesn't really matter if it's on there either because in this mode, you basically got a box that you can move anywhere like this or move it with your finger. You can also change the size of the box and make it as big or as large as you want. So if you're gonna be shooting something in the distance and something up close, you can literally just move it around on screen with your finger and it will pull focus. One area plus mode is very similar to one area mode, but we also now get the ability to turn on face and eye detection. This is the mode that I would use most of the time if I was out in the park, because it gives you a slightly larger box around the smaller box. And if you're standing anywhere within that area, even on the edges of it, it will know that that's what should be in focus. It gives you a little bit more play. This is definitely worth checking out. The only other mode I would suggest using is this full area AF, but I would turn face detection on 100% of the time if you're gonna be doing any talking to camera shots. Now, if you're not, you can leave it off, but then the way I would focus in this mode is just by touching on screen and creating a box. So it's basically one area mode again. But if you're in front of the camera and you need face detection, you can absolutely turn that on just by clicking up from this menu and you'll be good to go. If you're wondering what my preferred autofocus settings are, the GH6 works well with everything set to zero, which is a great step in the right direction, especially in that one area mode, it works great. But if you do wanna customize it for a talking headshot where you're not walking around too much in the frame, you can go from the camera icon over to focus, over to AF custom settings, then go down to set. Notice I had the AF sensitivity to minus one. If you want the far less hunting, you can turn this down to negative two. If you're using a prime lens, you might need it to be plus one on this camera, but just experiment around. What I found with Panasonic autofocus is it's very heavily dependent on the lens that you're using. Older lenses like this 25 millimeter F1.7 prime is nowhere near as good as the lens I've got on my GH5 Mark II, which is the 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8. So experiment around with this, find what works best for your shooting situation, but start with everything at zero and see how you go. One of the new features in the GH6 is called autofocus limiting, and this allows you to set threshold in which the autofocus is operational. 
This is designed to stop it from hunting or pulsing or doing anything weird like that. Although it's much corrected in this camera to prior cameras, it still can have an issue from time to time. To get into the focus limiter option, you start on the video camera on the top left, go over to the focus option and focus limiter. Now we wanna set this to begin with. And to do this, I'm just gonna take off the lens cap so we can get a sense of what's going on here. To so say, for example, I wanted my hand in focus here with autofocus, I'm gonna set a threshold by using the lens itself. So I'm just gonna move this around until my hand's basically in focus. Now, when I get that point, I'm gonna choose the white balance button on the top of the camera, which limits it to the first position. And then say I wanna move forward a little bit more and see how it's out of focus. I wanna move the focus point to where my hand's in focus. And I'm gonna hit the ISO button on the top of the camera. And now it's locked in from that particular spot. Now, what I wanna do is hit the, this menu set and you can see that focus limiter is on. As you can see now, my hand is in focus. If I move it forward, it's also going to be in focus. But if I move it too far back, it won't actually find focus because it's not in that range. And as you can see, it's pulsing and doing all kinds of weird stuff. This is one of those things, I don't know how often I would use it, but I wanted to include it because it is a new feature in this camera. When it comes to focus assist tools, the one I use most is focus peaking. Let's take a look. As you can see on screen right here, everything that's in focus is currently in red. And if I change focus, you're not gonna see those red lines. That's because I've set up the focus peaking colors in red to make life a lot easier for me. So I'm gonna show you how to get into this and how to customize it. So hit the menu set button over here. You wanna go from the far left menu at the top down to focus, down to focus peaking. Here you can go down to set and change the focus peaking sensitivity. I have mine set to plus two, so it's very obvious. You can also change the color to whatever you like. Red seems to work really well a lot of the time, or so does this sort of um, green color here. You can change it to any of these other colors. I usually just leave it to red. And if I don't like red, I usually change it to this gray or sort of white color. It's also very obvious when you're looking at the back of the screen or through the viewfinder that that particular point is in focus. So that's focus peaking. If you're in autofocus, it won't work. If you're in manual focus, it shows up. So you can move the focus point wherever you like to get everything in focus. Another cool tip for Panasonic cameras, if you're in manual focus, there used to be this swipe to focus option. It's not there anymore, but you can essentially just move this box wherever you like here and then hit the AF on button and it's going to focus on wherever that box is. And you can see that the focus peaking shows me that that is in focus. So that's working really well. If you own a Panasonic camera, this is an invaluable tool, so turn it on, but there's also something I wanna add on to this. Click the menu set button on the back of the camera, go down to focus peaking, go to set, and turn this on during AFS. And the benefit of this is if you're in continuous autofocus, for example, and you half press the shutter, the focus peaking lines are gonna come up and they only come up just to show you what's going to be in focus. This is a really cool tool. I suggest leaving that on. This next feature is called Lens Focus Resume and this is impeccable, especially if you're gonna be shooting in a studio situation where the cameras might not be moving and you plan on using manual focus. This allows you to turn the camera off, come back the next day, turn it on, and the focus point will be in exactly the same spot. To get into this menu, we start with the cog, we go all the way down to lens and others, and we turn lens focus resume on. I have a Panasonic S5 four camera multi-camera setup in another studio room, and I always leave this feature on. It means I can just turn all the cameras back on and they're in focus providing I'm in exactly the same spot. And thanks to all the focus tools, you can tell if focus is nailed with and without an external monitor. The GH6 now allows you to punch in while recording to nail focus, but I've never liked this tool. This is something that I always turn off, and if you like it and you use it, have at it. I know a lot of people do use it, but for a lot of the stuff that I do, I've generally got a reference monitor, or I find the LCD on the back of the camera more than ample for getting good focus, thanks to those peaking tools. So I'm gonna show you how to turn this off. To turn this off, start on the cog wheel, Go over to AF, go over to MF Assist, and turn off Focus Ring. And this will stop it punching in anytime you're using the lens itself, which I find much better than with it on. This all comes down to the kind of shooter you are. If you're used to using that punch-in tool, you'll love it. The GH6 has an upgraded version of it, but if you don't like it, you can still turn it off, which is fantastic. While the GH6 now supports CF Express cards and SD cards, 
you can also get backup recording on most of the codecs, excluding ProRes. To get into this backup option, click on the wrench, go over to double card slot function and change recording method to backup recording. And this will mirror both cards exactly the same. You can of course decide that you want allocation recording, which sends video to one card and photos to the other. But on any important recording, always choose the backup option. The GH6 is crammed full of different codecs, resolutions, and aspect ratios. I'm gonna run you through a few of them right now. To get into these options, start on the far left on the camera icon, go over to the film reel, which is image format, and go to record file format type. I've got mine set to MOV. If you go into the MP4 options, this is where you'll find the 8-bit codecs, or at least a couple of them. In the PAL region, there's three, these bottom three here. I don't really recommend using these unless you need to or your computer can't edit 10-bit, but just change this back to MOV. We also get Apple ProRes right here, which supports the CF Express Type B card, and these are just massive, massive files, but the advantage of it is they're far easier to edit because they're not compressed. So if you have a CF Express card, you can use that. I like to set this to MOV. It seems like the perfect balance between them both. One of my favorite new modes is 5.7K at 50 frames per second. This is far more pixels, as you can see on the back of the camera, than 4K, and it allows you to slow it down 50% if you're shooting in 25p. Now, the great news is with this camera as well, and one of the biggest upgrades, and one of the reasons to buy it, in my opinion, is the 4K 100p. Or if you're in the NTSC region, that will show up as 4K 120. This mode is fantastic. The step forward with the slow motion on the GH6 leaves the rest of my Panasonic cameras for dead, whether that's the S5, the GH5 Mark II, the GH5S, or my old school GH5s, which I don't have anymore. The slow motion out of this is every bit as good as the Sony A7S III. One of the powerful features of this camera is all of the custom modes you can save within the camera. So you can just move the top dial over to C1, 2, 3, or 4, and recall your favorite settings. Let's say, for example, I want to store 4K 100 frames per second on C1. So what I need to do is firstly find it <laughs> within all of these options. 4K 120, there it is. So I'm going to save that. I'm then going to go to my white balance button on the camera and decide which white balance I want, whether that's auto white balance, auto white balance cool or warm, sunny, whatever the case may be. I usually set this to auto white balance and adjust it on the fly, but if you do want to save it to cloudy day, for example, you can just leave it set to that. So when I'm good to go, I hit the menu set button again. Then from this menu over here, we go all the way down to the wrench option and then over to the cog wheel and then save to custom mode. And then I'm going to change this to C1 and it will ask me if I wish to replace it. Yes, and there we go. Without changing anything else on the camera, what I'm gonna do is go back into recording quality and set this back to 25 frames per second. Now this will allow me to shoot in a standard frame rate for my everyday recording just by using the movie mode. But if I go over to C1, you can see that on screen it says 100p, so it's that easy to save your favorite presets. Let's say, for example, once this is stored, how do we make modifications? Well, you make modifications the same way you just did on the prior step, but you can do it within the actual C1 mode. If we take a look at the back of the camera, we can change up our recording quality again and change it to whatever we like. If we wanna go up and change it to say 5.7K, we can do that. And then if we go back into the menu, we can go back to the wrench, save to custom mode, C1, Yes, done. And that's it. Now we'll have 5.7K mode by changing to C1. One of the biggest photography upgrades with the GH6 is its high resolution handheld mode. And you can access this by going into the fourth option on the top dial. I'll put a little picture on screen so you can see exactly which one this is. Now from the actual menu on the camera itself, we can go into the photo mode at the top here. We can change the aspect ratio of the photos from four by three to three by two, by 16 by nine to one to one. I'm just gonna leave it at four by three for now. And as you can see down here, we've got high resolution mode setting. I've got this on, the picture quality is combined. The picture size is 100 megapixels. To take a high resolution photo, just use this shutter button on the front. To lock focus, half press the shutter, and then depress it all the way down. 
creating high resolution image. This is all done via the V90 SD card, by the way. I don't have a CF Express card in here. It compiles a bunch of images to give you a much higher resolution image at the end. I had a chance to shoot in Perth, Western Australia with this recently and the high resolution mode looked absolutely beautiful. It was shocking just how much of an upgrade it is compared with just your standard photo modes. Thanks for watching folks, my name's Shane. I hope this video has been helpful. Please leave a thumbs up and if you wanna see more content on the GH6, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell. I'm gonna do some camera comparisons coming up, so stay tuned for them. Catch you soon, thank you, see ya.